Hello everyone and welcome to History Bite number 5, dated August the 12th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is about the First Continental Congress. The First Continental Congress was a governing body formed in late 1774 by delegates from 12 of the 13 American colonies to form an organized response to the intolerable acts passed by the British Parliament in response to the Boston Tea Party of 1773. Delegates from 12 of the 13 colonies met in Carpenter's Hall in Philadelphia for a one-month session, September to October of 1774, in order to better formulate a proper response to Great Britain. As you would expect, just as the Congress is today, Delegates from 13 very different colonies, yet all having a semi-common goal in mind of fair treatment from Great Britain, uh, these, these guys were not hardly all on the same page with respect to an appropriate response. Indeed, members such as John Adams and John Dickinson were as far apart in their thought processes as Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell. But they were able to slightly find common ground on putting out a declaration of resolves and grievances from the First Continental Congress. This document, the Declaration of Resolves and Grievances, specified colonial objections to the Intolerable Acts of 1774, listed a colonial bill of rights, as well as listed other grievances against the King and Parliament. The Declaration of Resolves and Grievances also made notice to the King and Parliament that the colonies would be implementing what was known as the Continental Association, whereby they would boycott British goods, as well as send a direct petition to King George III of Great Britain, letting him know specific things that the colonists wanted addressed now. and. Needless to say, the king was very unrelenting with respect to colonial grievances, and Parliament was no more inclined to address them either. However, the ultimate effects of the Declaration of Resolves and Grievances would be unknown, of course, to the Congress at that time, but they figured they would take their shot. Uh, what it did ultimately was provoke more retaliatory measures against the colonies from Great Britain wisely uh, reasoning that they would have to meet again to address the response from Great Britain, uh, the delegates decided to have another uh, session of Congress, which would be the following year. That would be known as the Second Continental Congress, of course, the one that is most famous for declaring American independence from Great Britain. Now, you may have noticed at the beginning that I said delegates from 12 of the 13 American colonies. Uh, which one was missing? Georgia. Uh, Tory sympathy in Georgia was so high, Tory meaning loyalist uh, sympathy to Great Britain, so high it outweighed patriot sympathy and so Georgia was not inclined to send delegates to the First Continental Congress. Uh, the Second Continental, uh, Second Continental Congress would of course have Georgia. Um, and in response with respect to the First Continental Congress for the future meeting, which would, like I said, be the Second Continental Congress, they would also extend invitations to Georgia, seeing if they would like to come around this time, uh, as well as to the other British colonies of East and West Florida, Quebec, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia, of course those three colonies being in Canada. Of all the colonies I just mentioned, only Georgia would send delegates. Uh, East and West Florida, as well as the three colonies in Canada, uh, Quebec, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia, uh, would have no interest in uh, joining in the American Revolution in any way, or joining in the American uh, insurrection and opposition to the mother country. And I can think the rationale, especially for the colonies in Canada, you know, would be specifically Quebec, I should say, is that 
their position was precarious at best. And, uh, you know, as uh, Catholic French Canadians, they didn't want to upset the little bit of rights they did have in an overwhelmingly Protestant British Empire. So that's what I think why Quebec especially refused to join in the American cause. But aside from that, uh, the Continental Association in boycotting British goods did have a marked level of success, but like I said, it only provoked more retaliatory actions from Great Britain itself. Uh, and as we would see later on with the Second Continental Congress, uh, our move uh, once the Revolutionary War had commenced we see actions totally inclined to separation. So the move and motives of the First Continental Congress were more aimed toward reconciliation with Great Britain. Whereas the Second Continental Congress, uh, having had their olive branch petition to the king rejected, pretty much concentrated itself solely on separation and the formation of a new United States of America. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you at the next History Bite. Peace.